In this video, you will learn how rock is blasted to enable excavation. Having a working knowledge of blasting is important since rock excavation is offered and countered in many parts of the country, including Alabama and Georgia. Blasting is a pretty specialized construction process, but at the simplest level, it can be described as the careful use of explosives to move and break rock for subsequent excavation. Construction blasting, particularly in urban areas, is a lot more complex than just breaking rock. The use and detonation of dangerous explosives puts this type of work in the public eye more than any other type of construction activity. Explosive detonation creates vibrations that have the potential, at best, to irritate adjacent residents and building occupants, and at worst, to cause damage to adjacent structures. Because of this potential for public irritation and vibration damage, pre-blast structural surveys, careful seismic monitoring, record keeping, and proactive public relations are all necessary, but sometimes overlooked, elements of a successful blasting program. The tight management of these risks include the use of independent third-party seismic consultants. This is critical to avoid public outcry and potential legal actions. With risk management side of blasting understood, let's take a look at the actual mechanics of blasting rock. The goal of blasting is to produce fractured rock of generally uniform size. Oversized rock or boulders will require secondary and expensive resizing operations. In simple terms, the blasting process is to drill holes in rock, load them with explosives, and then detonate to achieve breakage. The key to achieving uniform breakage in rock size is to distribute the explosive materials evenly throughout the rock. This is accomplished by drilling holes in a predetermined pattern or spacing. Here is an example of a drill hole pattern uh, in the lower left corner. The dots in the center represent the actual hole drilled and the outer circle represents the area of rock that will be fractured by the blast of that hole. The area between each of the outer circles is less in influenced and is the usual source of boulders and we've indicated that with a red arrow. So here's a diagram of two drill holes and the distance S would be equal to the pattern, spatian, as pattern spacing as shown in the lower left corner. Notice that in the diagram the two drill holes extend below the dashed line which represents the desired grade that the rock must be excavated to. The term for this extra depth is subdrilling, and the depth is usually about one half of the distance between the drill holes. This is necessary because the explosive charge will always seek the path of least resistance and travel upward from the bottom. This upward break angle is about 45 degrees. The subdrilling really amounts to extra work and expense that is not measured for payment since it is below the required grade and since the rock will not actually be excavated. The, per, the term pay depth is used to identify this distinction. There are many different types of drills used to create blast holes. A small drill like this one will make a fairly small hole which in turn will only hold a small amount of explosives compared to a larger drill making larger holes. Because the holes shown here are fairly small we can see that the pattern is pretty tight and lots of holes must be drilled. In this picture we see a much larger type of drill drilling of course larger diameter holes which are spaced farther apart. You might be asking yourself why anyone would want to drill lots of small holes when you could have a big rig and drill far fewer large holes especially since drilling rock is a very expensive process. The answer to this is that larger holes with larger explosive charges cause considerably more vib vibrations and the potential for damage. So the smaller drill and tight pattern which we first saw is more common in urban areas. This picture of the large drill was taken on a remote highway project. Okay so we understand a little bit about getting the blast hole drilled into the rock. Next let's look at what goes in the hole. At the very bottom of the hole, a detonator and primer are first inserted as we see here. The blasting cap is the detonator which initiates the blast in each hole. 
the cap is inserted into some type of primer. In this case, a stick of dynamite is used, but there are other types of primers also. The detonator and the primer are lowered down to the bottom of the hole with the wires extending to the surface. In the left image, we see the blasting cap coiled up. In the man's hand is a molded or cast type of primer, uh, in this case used instead of a stick of dynamite. In the right image, we see a blasting cap being, being inserted into a stick of dynamite. Three quick things to know about blasting caps. First, they are very dangerous. Second, the blasting cap wires from each hole are connected together and then to a blasting machine which ignites the detonators. Caps come in various delays of milliseconds, that is one five hundredth of a second increments, so that detonation can be sequenced and the force of the explosive directed or steered. Okay, so the detonator and primer are now in, now in place. Next we have the material that really does the work, the bulk blasting agent. Bulk agents are less expensive than dynamite and considerable volumes of them are usually used. On the left we see the loading of a large hole directly from a bulk explosives truck. This is usually the case with large projects. And on the right are the typical 50 pound bags that might be used on a smaller project. A little more information on the bulk agents used. The lowest cost material is called ANFO, which stands for ammonium nitrate fuel oil. This is nothing more than common farm fertilizer with a little bit of diesel fuel added. The downside of using ANFO is that there, if there is any moisture in the hole, it will not detonate. In addition to ANFO, there are a wide variety of slurries, jowls, emulsions, and custom blends that can even be used underwater. Bulk blasting agents are very safe and stable. They cannot be exploded without the use of a primer. The last material to go into the hole is called stemming. This material is usually the rock chips or cuttings from the drilling of the hole. Since we said that the blast energy will seek the path of least resistance, the stemming serves to, serves to block the top of the hole so that the energy will be forced outward from the hole and not upward. Okay, our holes are drilled and loaded. What happens next? The blasting machine causes the detonator to explode. The detonator causes the primer to explode and the primer ignites the bulk blasting agent which creates high pressure gas energy which in turn moves and breaks the rock. So here's a roadway cut. We can see that the, the individual holes which are all loaded and ready to fire. Before the shot is fired, the area is cleared of people and equipment, sirens are sounded, and an audible fire in the hole, which is a traditional warning, is shouted, and then the red button is pushed on the blasting machine. The shot is initiated, and the holes furthest to the right are detonated first to allow the entire shot to follow and move towards the right with the millisecond delays mentioned. This is because there must be movement for good rock breakage.